Dara, hello. It is um, September 2023 um, and we are here in the study with the princess who is obviously still in the limelight. Um, and we are going to conduct a end of term review of my Apple iPhone 14 Pro. Now, I can't hold it up and go, oh, what a great phone because I've actually sold it. And that's part of the story. So um, I made a little list here of things that are the good, bad and the ugly kind of thing. And we're going to go through that list and uh, I'm going to chat around the subject. So <coughs> this was my first, what I call hyper expect expensive uh, smartphone. My previous allegiance has always been to the Google brand. Uh, and in the olden days, before Pixel 6, um, Google didn't use to charge an arm and leg for their phones. Um, I've stuck with the Pixel 4 phone, which is still my favorite phone, still I prefer it to the iPhone 14 Pro. Um, but there are other factors in play, as, as I'm going to explain. But in terms of, in terms of sort of expensive Apple land, I had a Pixel, uh, sorry, an iPhone 12 standard phone, which I got at a bargain price from Amazon Warehouse, which of course I would recommend everyone to try before they buy anything. Check whether you've got an Amazon Warehouse uh, sale of the same thing, which is, uh, which is retailing from Amazon, not a third party, you might be able to get yourself a very good bargain. Because you can always send it back if it doesn't work out. Um, so this phone cost over a thousand pounds and to me that's a huge amount of money and that's one of the reasons why I'm uncomfortable with, with the cane just carrying the phone, because carrying a thousand pound phone to me something that could fall out my hand at any moment in time, never did happen. I was so paranoid and, 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 uh, about, about carrying it carefully. Um, it's something I'm, I'm not really used to. And on a future phone, if I buy another bonkers price phone, maybe that's gonna be uh, something I'll get more customers to. By the way, I'm a bit flowy, so uh, I'm continuing regardless. Um, I got no special deals on the 14 Pro, I bought it directly from Apple. Um, and the first thing I noticed was the phone was very heavy. So um, the phone is over 200 grams. And it's not a very big phone, and it's purposely not very big. It was chosen that way because um, my partner and I do quite a lot of athletics, and we don't want a heavy phone. Um, I would like a, a large screened phone because my eyes are are um, just average, and I find it uh, difficult to read small screens. Um, but the phone was very heavy. So for example, you know, this is not a sales campaign, but the, the allegedly the new, well not allegedly, the new iPhone 15 range, the Pro range is made from titanium uh, edge, the case, not the internals, it's still made from aluminium, but the External cases of titanium and it brings down the weight a little. And, and so again, back to the 14 Pro, it's heavy. But it was a small phone. I say small, uh, my partner has a five point something small uh, iPhone 13 mini now, just got it. And that is remarkably light. That is deliciously light at less than, it's about 100 and, less than 150 grams, I think. But this was over 200 grams. So it's never going to match a minute iPhone 13 mini, but it was, it was heavy. Um, what well, things I liked about it was that, uh, another thing I liked about it was the 5G support. Now we we actually do have, um, maybe just a little bit longer now. Um, we do actually have, 5G at our home to a degree, um, but it's, it's it's a slow 5G. Um, and in fact, in, in, in another home from home, we have over 200 megabits per second 4G. So I'm a great believer actually in the, in the 4G service. And I wasn't really able to test the 5G, except when you rock up at an airport and you've got like, you know, a, a thousand megabits per second, just like that, or 800 megabits per second. Baby, wait. Um, so I didn't ever use the, the 5G really, never came in handy. And I, I would still say in 2023, for most of us, 5G is, is, a, is a complete so what. Uh, and if you can get 200 megabits per second on 4G, 
what really is the point of 5G, except as, as, as a bragging tool in the pub. Um, so although it had 5G, didn't reuse it. The camera system was truly excellent. Now again, I'm, I'm comparing relative to the Pixel 4 XL, which I still think would give it a run for its money. Um, but the fact it did take 48 megapixel photos at last, uh, and you can manipulate them in raw mode using the Apple computer, so the Apple computer programs. So I would say that the fact that it's a pro level system with three cameras really elevates it above other two camera systems. So I've got to, just to read. <laughs> Amy, <laughs> little bit. I know you want to go. Um, it does rather elevate it above other. <laughs> there will be a small pause while I um... <laughs> speak to the princess. One moment. I'm uh, um, so to continue. Um, we are missing the princess now. She's she's gone off in a half. Um, one thing I have found very useful is the ability to sync movies. Um, so if you shoot a movie on an iPhone, you can easily get it to two, to two gigabytes without, without trying too hard. Uh, and unlike some other YouTubers, I've not had any problems in synchronizing movies via Wi-Fi. So I regularly synchronize um, files of over one gigabyte and sometimes up to two or three gigabytes over a Wi-Fi connection. And we have rock solid microtech routers in this house. We have uh, AX networking, and we can we can do that at hundreds of megabits per second. Um, so the, the ability to sync movies uh, faster than, for example, my Pixel Four, which doesn't have um, Wi-Fi six level networking, it was really appreciated. Uh, moving on to battery life, it wasn't very good. I'm going to say not 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 stellar. It is 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 putting it mildly. Um, I'm this kind of person that would take the phone and whenever I get onto my desk here, I've got a charging, uh, a charging port and uh, I'll just plug it straight in. So the phone gets regularly charged and um, after one year, let's put it back like that. So after one year, uh, quick, so it's quick, quick to discharge. And after one, one year, We are at battery level ninety-seven percent. So, uh, so Android users may may not know, but um, one of the, one of the you know, good feature of the Apple platform is that it tells you the sort of um, its reckoned battery capacity. So it starts at hundred when you get a new phone, and as you wear out the battery, it's going to go down. So ninety-seven percent after a, one year of hard use, I think it's pretty good. Um, USB-C connections, so. Um, this is a lightning connected phone and um, if I was to switch to this, this heading is trying to say if I was to switch in the future to a USB C Apple phone, i.e. the generation 15 phone, it might be okay for me personally, but I'm living in a house where, where you know, we, or we have other equipment which still uses lightning. So actually the lightning connector is actually an advantage as such in this in this home because I'm I'm kind of forced into using uh, Apple Apple equipment in a way, um, and so, and so I, I don't mind the lightning interface and it is quite diminutively and small and it's lovely and reversible. It's just slight. It's slightly more physically satisfying to use than USB C. I do ha I do have to admit. Um, Relative to my Pixel 4, I still prefer the, um, I still prefer the Pixel 4. Well, I've got a Pixel 4 XL, which is a larger sort of screen. Um, the Pixel 4 XL has a better face ID than uh, any Apple phone, but they, Google obviously have dropped that technology. It's got free photo, photo storage, which is unlimited, which you don't have in Apple. You have to buy uh, iCloud storage. Um, and it, it seems to me just as fast. Uh, and lastly, uh, I think I'm at the end of this list, um, I'm still uncomfortable carrying a £1,000 phone. It's just that 
I make special allowances for something that I'm holding in my hand that's that, 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 that is that expensive, that it isn't attached to my wrist, for example. If it was a thousand pound watch attached to my wrist, I just have to worry about bashing it. But if something that's in my hand, I might be running with it uh, on an ultra run or something like that, uh, or just in a, in, a, in a crowded, noisy situation where people are pushing past me. It's something that's obviously easily able to be knocked out of your hand. And I'm just, I still am uncomfortable about, about, uh, about carrying that, in which case we do actually have, if we go to the costs section, I've tried to apportion some costs to the phone. Uh, we have some more or less specialist insurance, which, which covers it, this phone and other things. So I've just said it's about, 30, let's call it 30 pounds. And that's the 30 pounds where I'm trying to ensure the fact that if some very un ungrateful, careless person other than me knocks out of my hand, the phone is still covered to a degree. It's not fully covered, but it's, it's somewhat covered. Um, so where are we? The, the, the question in my mind is back to Android, yes or no? Well, in terms of my um, want, it would certainly be back to Android because I still prefer the, the, um, the Android look and feel. I still prefer having a uh, backward swipe, a back button effectively, which is just missing on, in, in the Apple world. Um, and I, I, I very much chime with the Google set of products more than the Apple set of products. But there's a big but, and the big but is that um, to read notifications, the Apple Watch, not the Apple smartphone, is a very good tool. Um, and I, I'm sort of locked in for the moment because the Apple Watch is such a good way to read notifications, of which I get hundreds per day, um, that the Apple Watch mandates an Apple phone. Because Apple, of course, doesn't allow you to have a meaningful linkage with, with an Android smartphone from your Apple Watch. Um, and because of that, if you start off with the premises that you're going to have an Apple Watch, um, which I don't at the moment have, but if in the future I was to have an Apple Watch again, then that would obviously push 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 one into getting an Apple Apple phone. And Apple knows this, and Apple designs it that way, and to lock you in. So uh, thanks, Apple. You, you, you know, people recognise this, appreciate the integration, but also appreciate the fact that we are being locked in. But back to the 14 Pro, it's a wonderful phone. I don't think any phone is worth a thousand pounds, and and in that respect, I am still annoyed about the price, amazed about the capabilities of the phone. It behaved very well in the eleven months that I owned it. Like I say, it was very heavy, but it certainly was fast and took amazing photographs. So overall, I'm going to give it like a a five out of ten based on its bonkers price and you know, irritating price. Um, and I hope that the new owner, who's got the, pro the phone at almost half that price, is going to have a, you know, a wonderful time. Um, I think they will for that price. It's an absolute steal. So goodbye, 14 Pro. You will be missed. Thanks for watching, Derek.